but we played Arsenal in that gap. And I remember, <laughs> I remember the Arsenal fans singing at me, you'll never play for Arsenal. And I, and I was thinking, I'm on, I'm on the pitch, I'm thinking, I will, because I've already signed the contract. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I didn't really want to leave. Yeah. But, you know, I wanted to stay at Arsenal. And, and I remember, like, Arsenal scored first and then City equalised. And when we equalised, I'm like, I'm running around the box giving it loads like that. <laughs> Thierry, like, looked at me and went, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back. We, on this show, normally brand it out as legends. Uh, we throw that term out a lot, don't we? Too, way too much for... Yeah, for, for what we have currently what got, in, got the in, in the building. This is childhood memories. In my yep. opinion, the greatest ever goalie for England. 100%. Arsenal's best ever goalie all time. Yep. And a genuinely top, top man. We have got yep. Mr. David Seaman. <laughs> looking so wonderfully. Look, look at, doesn't even look a day older than when he retired, mate. 59. <laughs> <laughs> also, we've also forgot Birmingham City. I know. Legend, oh, yes. I I'm a blue say, nose. Yes, you are a blue nose. We went to QPR and Peterborough. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. forget all of that. <laughs> no one really remembers that. It's the Arsenal stuff. It's the England. It's the Man City. It's the ponytail. Yeah. yeah. That's all the stuff we're going to get into. <laughs> How are you, mate? You're looking very yeah, well. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Yeah. yeah. You know, fresh off the. Uh, the training ground up at Coney. Oh, nice. On the Arsenal side, not yeah, the Watford, not the Watford side. side. <laughs> yeah. The nicer side of the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we, we used to train on that. Like, yeah. When I first went to Arsenal, that was mm -hmm. our training ground where you train. I remember I did, a, did an interview with Wrighty for Premier League when, when we just got promoted and he was like walking around going, oh, this is how it used to be. I yeah. think it's all the same uh, it, yeah. visually. Right. It's like where we got changes where you used to get wow. changed. It's all the same. So yeah. he was, yeah, he went down memory lane and you know, when you think about it, like, for for us just getting promoted, wow, legends have tried there. Like, yeah. like this is it, it, yeah. it gets your juices. There's, be some, there's be some right scraps on that field. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that. Yeah. Later. <laughs> so, so how how are you finding in going into Arsenal? Obviously, with the new current regime and uh, yeah, you know, it, life's good now, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. You know, especially you know we're talking just after the Chelsea result. Yeah, you know, and it's. Um, the training camp was a lot better this morning. I went yeah, in, yeah. I was in after the day after the Man City game. Yeah, yeah. And that wasn't a good place. Yeah. The U team had just got beat as well in the cup final. Yes. West Ham. Yeah, yeah. So it was a little bit low. Yeah. But now it's different. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying going in. I go in like once a week. Yeah. Um, just to chat with the coach, help coach with the under 21, the nice. goalies, and yeah. the under 18 sometimes as well. So would you say help in, in a technical, social which way like or everything yeah. that's what I, you know that's what i'm there for um <laughs> when, I, when i first started going back um because um per met invited yeah, me back yeah. and i went in and the very first day i went in and it was last season when they played tottenham and beat them 3-1 i think it was at the emirates yeah and um and i go in and michael's there saying hello and everything so oh, do you want to come in for the debrief for the tottenham game i was like what <laughs> <laughs> and i went in and like and in front of everybody, he like he proper like introduced me in front of all the lads, you know, That's this is brilliant. David Seaman, a proper club legend and all this That's won brilliant. everything and I was like, Wow. Yeah, you yeah. Know, and it was it was it was a nice welcome bite, but it was great to be back as well and mm -hmm. just to be back at the training ground and remember all the stuff that we used to do there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna ask, do you think he's dispelled the you remember under Arsenal it was obviously great at the start and then towards mm. the end it got very disconnected, yeah. did it, between yeah. fans and, 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 and club. Do you think he's done over the last 18 months, two years, he's, he's reconnected the fan base and everyone's bought back into De Arsenal? Definitely. Um, you know, towards the end of Arsenal, it was it was, it was was hard to watch, if I'm yeah, honest. Yeah. You know, not not as in his, the way he was coaching, but the way that the fans were reacting yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, just, I was just like, wow, he doesn't deserve this. Definitely. They don't realise what is going on because they thought he got hold of all the purse strings. And yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. he didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no no two ways about that. He didn't control everything. Mm -hmm. But then, obviously, now with the with Mikel, he was there with Arsenal mm -hmm. you know, as a player, then as a captain. Yeah. And now he's he's doing exactly the same thing as what the way that Arsenal did it. Oh, okay. You know, like you getting everybody back on board. Yeah. Like even even the staff at the training ground. You know, he wants yeah, to, yeah. he wants to get the best out of them. Mm -hmm. You know, even the chefs and all that. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's it, challenging. It is. It's back to the Arsenal ways. If if that's what you like. You know. No, definitely. I think yeah. you need everyone pulling in the same direction, don't you? If you if you're going to maintain the title charge, you got to do off the field as well. And yeah, if you've got everyone pulling in the same direction. Sounds like it's a perfect place to be for. Yeah, that's it. You know, and you player. don't want any 
like I wouldn't say bad apples in the dressing yeah, room yeah. and stuff like that. You know, and, mm -hmm. you know, even the way that he dealt with the Aubameyang situation, you know, yeah. that was going south. It was surprising all, at the time as well. Yeah, you didn't expect but he, you know, he was he was like constantly late, and there was a lot yeah. of other stuff going on. And it was just like he dealt with it the Arsenal way. You know, which was like right, no, this is the Arsenal. Yeah, I, I think that I think that is what I know. We, Ozil was gone before that. I know, but um, Lacazette went after. But I feel like the Aubameyang one was the one that brought everybody and made it from a player's perspective. Being in that dressing room, like, oh, yeah, the captain can go. Yeah. We can all go. And it kind of felt like everyone fell into line after that because mm. you do need that, don't you? We've, we've yeah, been you there, do. obviously. Yeah, you know, and like like you said, the the fact that they got rid of him. Mm -hmm. The captain and like the star player as well. Yeah, yeah. He scored know, a lot of goals at the time. You can't miss around. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's so annoying, isn't it, when people are always late. Oh, as yeah. As a player, you know, you're in the meeting and everything, and then people are coming in late. You're like, geez, you know, what, yeah. what's going on? And mm -hmm. I've said it before, then I got into got a bit of stick for it, but I was saying how I take that is that your time's better than mine. Yeah. If you say, if the meeting's at f uh, five o'clock, should be in there by 10 to. Yeah. 55 at best. Yeah, don't be it, late. Yeah, there's no excuse. Exactly that. Not when all the lads are waiting for you. Exactly that, and that's yeah. what it is. So I just want to dive into it because one thing we did, we we did a show recently. Did we together? We did a audible. I've I've got relatively big hands. I would say <laughs> slabs. Can we just see the size of these? Look at them. They it are proper. <laughs> Sometimes they, are... they weren't big enough. <laughs> Bit of butter on them. <laughs> he starts. He starts. Oh, no, I'm, for, sorry, I'm no, sorry. For, for, for us, I think I want to go forward to go backwards. If that's okay with you. And then we was driving down earlier. I was having a chat with me, and there was it was a question that 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 Mark polls that I thought was really interesting. When you left um, Arsenal to go City, when when from a keeper's perspective does a manager know it's time to move on? So with a striker, he might stop scoring, might lose, get injury yeah. or any other position, but with a goalkeeper, it's just a question he polls yeah. that I've never yeah. really thought it, of it, it myself. What made me think of it as well was I was, I was looking through, could see the career that you had and it reminded me of Joe Hart and you know when Pep cut him, mm. and he was just like, didn't see that one. Yeah, didn't see that. Yeah, I, I think, feel like I think it was the same with you. Like with with Joe, it was still a, it was a little bit difficult. He he still wanted to play. Yeah, yeah. and he still has. He's still playing now. Yeah, you know, like a lot of years down the line. Um, with me, I was coming towards the end, and I knew it, and and Arsenal mm. knew it, and I, I would only sign like a one year deal mm. every yeah. year because I didn't know whether I wanted to carry on. Oh, okay. Or yeah. whether they would want me. Yeah. You know, and it, it got down to my my last game which mm. i didn't know was was the cup final against southampton yeah i, mean, I was captain for the day because patrick vieira was injured mm -hmm. yeah um and i go and win, we win we won the trophy i lift it and everything with patrick in his suit mm -hmm. i remember <laughs> that yeah and and then i go i go home i go to portugal on the beach and arson phones me up and he says like i've got an offer for you i was like okay and he went i want you to be my number three goalkeeper i was like Whoa! Ooh, yeah, and then he, and he went, that. but I want to be my goalkeeping coach, and I was like, okay, that's something that I'm really interested in. Yeah, but then he's mentioned about a 75 percent wage drop, and I just started laughing, and, then, yeah, and yeah, I knew yeah. I, that was like the end of my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, because I got other clubs still chasing me. Birmingham yeah. were, yeah, yeah, were yeah. asking, so Man City were asking, um, and in the end, I chose Man City. But he, Arsenal's so intelligent and knows everything about football and your footballer's body. And what age they are is how long if you get an injury how long you're going to be out for he mm -hmm. knew everything you know oh, okay. and i was getting a lot more injuries mm -hmm. and it was taking longer you know i think in the 2002 season me i think it was me richard wright and stuart taylor all got a medal because mm -hmm. they would all played enough yeah. games yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know, so it shows Surprising you that i was nice getting towards the mm -hmm. end injury wise i was picking up more injuries you know people say about re re uh, reactions and stuff like that I made that save against Sheffield United yeah, when yeah, I was yeah. 39. Yeah, yeah. You know, so talk about that, yeah. Go yeah, on, man, you know, perfectly caveated. Didn't you? Go on, <laughs> you had that question, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, so like, obviously you've got, for me, you've got a lot of standout performances in your career. You've got the save from like Pesky Salido in that final. You've got... Um, Semi. Semi-final. Semi-final, sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, you've got the Naeem goal. <laughs> yeah, so I've, I've got a drop here. <laughs> <laughs> the Ronaldinho goal. Yeah, and what else you got? You got the McAllister save in, yeah, in the Euro. Yeah, you're in 96. Yeah, like what post a moment for you would be 
if you you know if you used to summarize your career what would be the one thing that would stand out for you good or bad well the the two the two bad things you know the the naeem and then ronaldinho that's like but goalkeepers are remember for mistakes yeah a lot yeah, of goalkeepers true. are yeah, yeah yeah right some get mentioned for certain saves or you know so yeah. it's it's that's all part of being a goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. Um, I think what really put me on the map was Euro '96. Mm -hmm. You know, that McAllister save, the, the save from Nadal in the, yes. in the quarterfinals against Spain. Yeah, um, you know, so all, all that it just it jumbles in, but then I've got then I've got Arsenal. You know, mm -hmm. like my first season that I go to Arsenal, we won the league, I yeah. let in 18 yeah. goals, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I was under big pressure because yeah, I took yeah. over from a, another club legend, yeah, John Lukic. Yeah. yeah. You know, so that was great, and then, then we win the double when Arsenal comes in '98. Mm -hmm. Then we do it again, you know, too. You know, so there's like there's like tons of stuff in there. So that that was going to be my my question. So when when you go, I know it would be disrespectful because obviously I still Birmingham is my club, but QPR, Birmingham, Peterborough. What's it like for people that don't understand the the jump from those clubs, which yeah. are they are big clubs in their own oh, yeah. right? But then you go to Arsenal. What was that like for you to to comprehend the the level of club that you've just come to? Do you know? Do you know the biggest thing that stands out for me is when I got so I got released at Leeds when I was nineteen. Yep. And then I went to Peterborough, right at nineteen. I didn't even know where Peterborough was. Yeah. yeah. Right. But passport office, did it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, not sorry, <laughs> Peterborough. That's the only reason I know. <laughs> and then, but then I, I went straight into the first team and I was playing. At nineteen, and I was playing against men. Yeah, you know, and and these games meant some. It was all right. It's fourth division, mm -hmm. but it meant a lot to a lot of people. Yes, and I didn't. I'd never thought of that before. And then I was like, I'm playing in front of fans, and I'm like, wow, this is like real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a big jump. And then from that, I went from I was there for two years, and then I went to Birmingham, and we, I joined them in the second division. Yeah, first season we got promoted, as we came second, mm -hmm. but then we got relegated straight away. And then I left, you know, so that, that was a massive jump. Mm -hmm. I felt that the jump from Birmingham to QPR wasn't that big. No. Because it was a similar, you know, but QPR were in the top division. Yeah. I've just been in the top division with Birmingham, um, you know, so that felt all right. But the jump from QPR to Arsenal was just like, I'm going into a dressing room that's full of league winners. Yeah. You know, Is the, that George, off, the George Graham era, that? Yeah. yeah. They're, and they're off, like... It was the season after, not the season after, the next one after they'd won at Anfield. Yes. You know, in 89. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so like they're proper, these are like proper winners. Mm -hmm. mm. But I wanted to do that because I had a chance of staying at QPR and, and my contract would have been bigger at QPR than yeah. what I signed for at Arsenal. Okay. You know, but I wanted to see Test how far yourself. I could go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because I knew that QPR were, they were happy to stay in the division. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, as it, I haven't had a chance of going to Man United or Arsenal, you know. Oh so, wow! Yeah, you know, I spoke to Fergie one yeah. day. Yeah. The 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 same day Arsenal came in for me, you know. Oh, so it okay. was like really quick. Um, what but, made you made that choice then, uh, George Graham over Fergie? Over Fergie. Well, I've been in I've been in London for four years, yeah. and Fergie said I was I was running out of contract. And Fergie, I spoke to him on the phone. Brian Robson says oh, I've got somebody to that wants to speak to. I was like, <laughs> I was like. Shit. <laughs> I'm on the phone with him and I was like I'm going to Man United yeah. and this was before I knew anything about the Arsenal bid but then when they came in and then it all fell through because there was a fee they'd made an offer at Arsenal oh, okay. Man United hadn't he was going to wait and yeah, I'd be yeah, trying yeah. to get me for nothing and then excuse me whatever um, but it all fell through and then I went back to QPR and Ray Wilkins was at QPR mm -hmm. with me and Don Howe and I asked Ray, I said, what would you do? And he said to me, he says, if you go Man United now, you won't win stuff straight away. He said, but you will in a couple of seasons because they're, 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 they're massive. Yeah. Mm. He said, but if you go to Arsenal, you'll win things straight away. Oh, wow. Plus, I'd lived in London for four years when I was at yeah, QPR. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my family was settled and that's, yeah, that was like the, the decision made that I do just wanted to stay down south. Do you ever look back, you know, like the name said there and, you know, uh, rest in peace to, to to Ray Wilkins. It's like the 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 start of your career was maybe so much more built on the people around you. So like you just said, you went from Leeds, then you went into to men's football as we call yeah. it, and it meaning something. Every point matters. All those steps, but having the guidance to those earlier, um, harsher 
critic, shall we say, yeah. made you the player that you are. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because, you know, and and even like within the last couple of weeks, there's been a couple of lads got released at Arsenal. Mm -hmm. And I've said to them, you know, I've told them my story. Yes. You know, and and I always say to them, go away and prove them wrong. Yeah. And that's what like my motivation was. That was your why. Proving yeah. Leeds wrong. Yes. You know, because I've always been a Leeds fan. Oh, okay. You know, so it was even, it was yeah, double. Yeah. Yeah. So we, won't, we won't get into what's been happening there. Then. We'll, leave, <laughs> no. we'll leave that alone. Let's we'll talk about Spurs. Or we'll be here for weeks. Uh, <laughs> but, for people um, that don't know, there's a Spurs fan off camera yeah. who's <laughs> chewing feathers at the moment. <laughs> but but, yeah. Yeah, it's, but it's but, like proving people wrong. Yeah. You know, like you say, and, and then, okay, after, after that, you know, it started getting better. Mm -hmm. it's, probably you know every two years or so but yeah. um yeah and that's what i tell the young lads now you know like mm. go away and prove arsenal wrong that what, they're letting you go what was like the the training like when you went in at arsenal from qpr wait well, it was all right for me because so bob wilson who was my coach at arsenal for yeah. 13 years he was like my full-time coach there he also used to come to qpr oh, okay like once a week and he did that for a couple of years as well, you know, so I'm oh, sure he's on like a little bit of a spying mission for George Graham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but then, and in the end, you know, the opportunity came and, oh, um, nice. you know, like, like I said to you earlier, when, I, when I, I went to sign the deal and everything, it all depended on John Luke going to, yeah. going to Birmingham, I think, yeah. or going to Leeds. Yeah. And John wouldn't go, so it all fell through. Oh, wow. Well. So then I've got to go back to QPR. <laughs> you know, I started getting a bit of stick. It was mm -hmm, then yeah. it just it split the crowd, you know, like yeah, half of them were calling me all sorts and yeah. the others realised, you know, that the club were gonna get money and everything. But we played Arsenal in that gap and I remember <laughs> I remember the Arsenal fans singing at me, You'll never play for Arsenal and I, and I was thinking I'm on I'm on the pitch, I'm thinking I will, because I've already signed the contract. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, little two fingers. <laughs> I know, yeah, and I don't, you know, and, and it's only because like John was such yeah, a, yeah. a fan's favourite. Yeah, you know, yeah, and he was course. a good goalie as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, well, speaking of that, you could obviously call him John. There, I'm like, everyone knows goalkeepers are a little bit. <laughs> a little bit batshit crazy, yeah. Let's let's call it. Let's call it. I, yeah, yeah, some say we're crazy. Like, I I I say some are different. different. <laughs> <laughs> but you have this like cult mentality that you're all yeah. goalkeepers Stick together, right? don't they? Yeah. But they never a goalkeeper could make a mistake. Like miss the ball completely, goes and do sports scores. Yeah. Peter Enkelman at uh, Blues oh, Villa. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. best day. No yeah. goalkeeper would ever say that was his fault. It was a mole popped yeah. up, or or not to his face. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what no, is what is the collective with you, goalkeepers? I know, because then they call it the Golders Union. Yeah, but I think it's just an appreciation of what we go through. Yeah, you know, because the amount of training that we do away from match day, yeah, is a lot of training. Yeah, you know, we cover a lot of um, things in training, in, in you know, like different drills in training to make sure that we're ready for Saturday. Yeah, and then Saturday sometimes we never have anything to do. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it, it can be it mm -hmm. can be like that, you know. So our training is different to what to what yours was. Yeah, you, yeah. Most of your training away from games is all about recovery, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Once the season starts, mm -hmm. you know. But ours is a lot of fitness in that week, and then we we play Saturday. Um, but yeah, but it, I think it's just an appreciation of the stresses of our job. Yeah, you know, because you can play great for eighty nine minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, like even like Ronaldinho when he scored that goal, I had a really good game in that game yeah, <laughs> against yeah, yeah. Brazil. Yeah. Yes, yeah. But nobody remembers it. They just remember that mistake. Mm. Uh, did he mean know. that, by the way? I Do know he didn't. He but he didn't. It, it still went in. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, for me, it's a goalkeeping mistake because yeah. it's that far out. You know, and, yeah. I, and I was told at, 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 after the game that he didn't mean it by. You remember Gilberto Silva? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was yeah, playing yeah. against us, and he told me, and I was. You know, we, we was talking about that. So not to make you feel we was we was at school then. <laughs> and we was able, we was able, we was able to watch the game because it was on. It was early, early morning, weren't exactly, it? Exactly. Yes, we were able yeah. to watch that. So, I, what I was saying for me, that might be the best Brazilian team that I can think yeah. of, man for man. Mm. And as you say, you played unbelievably well. But that game is only ever highlighted by that goal. Mm. Just how difficult was it to prepare for a team of that caliber? It, it was tough, but. Yeah. Uh, but we, to be fair, we had a decent team. Mm -hmm. You know, England. We had yeah, a yeah, pretty yeah, decent team then, and um, it I must admit it was a bit weird being managed by a Swedish guy. Yeah, yeah. I did feel that that did feel a bit weird, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> but it was yeah, and I remember like 
in the game, you know, I, I had a lot to do first half and mm. I came for a cross and nearly like flipped my back over and yeah, all sorts that, yeah. of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But it was, yeah, it was like Ronaldinho, uh, Ronaldo, Brazilian yeah. Ronaldo, obviously. Proper, I had a couple died. of 1v1s yeah. with him yeah. and his little yeah. toe poke. He was, he was deadly with that, you know, but yeah. I'd seen it before. Yeah. And I was ready for one of them. Um, yeah, there was, there was some proper, proper players in it, but, mm -hmm. um, I remember, like after the goal, we'd still got half an hour to go. Yeah, and I was thinking, like, shit, get me out of this, lads. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this game ends on yeah. that. You know, I was actually while I was playing, I was thinking, like, am I going to get treated like Bex did? Yes, in '98. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he got sent yeah. off. You know, when I get back, I suppose you don't think of that at yeah, the time yeah, as well, do you? Yeah, like, what's the what's the comeback from this? What's you know? Yeah. What, and I was I was lucky, you know, and, and the, I was lucky that the fans loved me because, like, when we when we actually flew back from Japan. We landed at Heathrow and I got off the coach and like there was lots of England fans there and yeah, they just all yeah. started singing my name. Oh, you know, so it was yeah. like a massive relief. You'd, Apart yeah. from all the Tottenham fans. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> There's not that many of them anyway, don't worry about it. <laughs> I was just think I was just thinking, you touched on it earlier. Uh the the penalty save in ninety six. Because mm. that that for me is what got me into football. Yeah. Not Euro the Euro ninety six, yeah. being at home, yourself, Gascoigne, Shearer, sharing going back Na and the yeah, you go, go through all the yeah, 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 the, roll off the grey kit you know your yeah. yellow uh, and the jersey. red one oh, yeah. yeah but I was saying to, to, to Mark when we was talking I was like do you remember Yuri Geller trying to say it was his oh, fault that he missed the penalty <laughs> <laughs> no he got on it proper didn't he yeah, right? right so like I, so I, <laughs> How did that make what, you what feel I remember that, first no. of all that I, just, I, remember, that? I must have been I don't know what 10 years old yeah. and I remember watching I think it was a big breakfast on Channel 4 and this guy's on there talking about he Adam and he yeah. moved the ball he made the ball the yeah. ball did move to be fair yeah right but, so like <laughs> so this is funny. so I got I got Yuri Geller on my podcast on yeah. my Seaman Says podcast right yeah. I've had him on and he's like he's he's yeah, Adamant. He's he's Adamant. talk about goalkeepers. Yeah. <laughs> he's a little bit special. He's different. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I said to him, I said, so Yuri, you're trying to take all the credit for that one. I was like, where were you when the Germans were taking the penalties? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's a good shout. No, but how, like, oh, how did you busy. feel in that in that that time though when you're hearing that? Are you just oblivious or is it a bit like, hold on, this is my moment is, here? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I was just. I, yeah, you just like leave it and yeah. like let him have his bit, and you know I yeah, had, yeah. I had my bit there, you know. And, but I knew so when when Gary McAllister came up to the ball, it, it did start to actually move a little bit, almost oh, okay. like it's falling off the spot a little. Yeah. And then with that, he he hit it like really hard. Yeah. And I faced Gary before at Liverpool and Leeds, and he bent it, he bent it to my right, bent yeah. it to the left. But he's, he hit it like so hard because I think it started moving, mm -hmm. like changed his mind a little bit. Which oh, then, okay. And I'd gone to my right and I couldn't, I'd gone that way and I couldn't get that out fast enough. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's why I just stuck my elbow up. Yeah, just. And it caught something. it like right on the end of it and went over the bar. Oh, and oh, happy it was days. Perfect. What was that team like to play in? Because there's a lot of characters in there. Yeah. Oh, there was. You know, there's like loads. you got Gazza, you got yeah. Incy, you got Tony mm -hmm. Adams, Stuart Pierce. Am I right in thinking. Obviously, I'm young, so Do please like forgive me. Steve Stone was in this. Yeah, yeah but I feel like and there was a there was a preseason. There's like a little tour beforehand. Is that where Gaza got in trouble? <laughs> well, a lot, a, a lot of lads got in trouble yeah. with the dentist. That's where, yeah, yeah. From, where, where where was that? Singapore, Sorry for Singapore. anyone that's watched. I, I was ten. <laughs> yeah. Give me a, give me a break. <laughs> it was in Singapore. We we went out to Singapore on a you know pre tour, a pre tournament tour, yeah. and. Um, and we played against like a Singapore pub eleven, because like. But but why though? When I don't it's, it was know. In, it was it, in it's, England. It's no? obviously sponsorship. No, it was in yeah. Singapore. Isn't it? No, I'm on about the the actual tournament. The to tournament, tournament was yeah. in. Yeah, England. I know. I don't so know why we went out there. the other side of the world yeah. to come all the way back. Yeah, went, went the other side of the world, caused havoc, then came. Yeah. Back. <laughs> 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 yeah, and that was like that was the dentist. We had it. We played the game and we had a night out. Yeah, and I I, I was probably one of about three that didn't make it I, oh, okay. I, went, I went upstairs yeah and i was we were all supposed to like meet down in reception in half an hour i went upstairs to get a shower and that sat on the bed and arsenal play chef chef your wednesdays on the telly oh okay so i starts watching it about five minutes and the next thing i'm bosh i fall yeah, asleep, fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> it's the old vegas but, rule and it don't sit down <laughs> and then i was like then the next morning all the lads are talking about ripping shirts off each other yeah, yeah. the dentist chair up and i was like <laughs> Oh, Mr. Right night out here. <laughs> Where would all that come from? Gaza or is there another like 
Teddy, yeah. Shearer, Teddy Bradford, yeah. loads of them. Was, say it, was, it was a culture. It then, was though, a good, it? yeah, but it was it was a it was a good culture. Yeah, you know, it got everybody mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. You know, a bit like at Arsenal, we used to have this thing called a Tuesday club. Where we, we I was going to get out. into this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we, would, we yeah. would all go out on Tuesday, but we knew we were off Wednesday. Yeah, and then in Thursday, you know, but. You know, a couple of the lads took the Tuesday club to Wednesday and Thursday. <laughs> but as you do. Yeah, but we would we would all go out, you know, and it'd be great for the team. Mm-hmm, you know, yeah. you didn't have to stay out all night if you didn't want to. You yeah. know, there was no pressure. There's no pressure to be in the in the club if yeah, you didn't yeah. want to. Did you feel like you got to air out a lot of grievances as well? So if you had a bad game on a Saturday, Tuesday club was kind of the Yeah, but it was get like it off your chest kind a, little, of moment. a little bit, but not it weren't a lot. Yeah. You know, because it weren't you went out and had a good time. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You know, like we, we would like when it, when George was manager, you could say it in the dressing room. Oh, okay. At half time or yeah. afterwards, but with Arson, totally different. Yeah, because he... silence at mm-hmm. half time was for it, ten minutes. As I say, it was it five ten minutes of calling down? And yeah, then, like and no, and, and as in like no words, you couldn't yeah. speak. Yeah, yeah. Pat Rice once came in and was like having a go at the lads who were losing at half time. He's like, rah, rah, and Arson in front of everybody went, Pat, sit down and be quiet. Oh well, you know, me yeah. were like. Yeah, you know, it's a bit of a tough one, isn't it? And then so like nobody spoke, and then Arsenal would do his bit and then go out. But with mm. George, it was different. He, he, him and Wright, he had some like massive rows and yeah, throwing boots and chucking <laughs> stuff at each other and all sorts. You know, you can imagine with Wrighty, you yeah, know, yeah. you know, Wrighty has, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. has to get the last word. Yeah, has to get the last word. He does it right. But I was, was going to ask because um, we had Andy Cole on the podcast recently, and Andy was talking about that whenever there was a little bit of a bad run or they were coming up to an important time period, they would have a night out, they'd schedule a night out yeah. for, let's have a bite to eat, clear the air, anything, what do we need to do, how do we need to do it? That gets left at the table yeah. on a Tuesday, have a good Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday training was immaculate, everyone yeah. was at it. Yeah. Was that synonymous with like the, the, the top boys at that time? That's, what you, that's how you kind of conducted yourselves for that time period? With George, I'd say yeah. Yeah. Um, not with Arson. It was like totally different. It was. Do you know what with Arson? He, he hardly ever focused on the opposition. Okay. It was Just always about, about us. Yeah. You know, even team meetings. The only time that he would speak about the opposition would be set pieces. Okay. Like corners and free kicks against and that. And he'd hardly do anything on them. Oh wow! You know, and it was always about how we played. Surprising to hear that. Mm. You'd think that it'd be, you know, meticulous. Yep. Yeah. yeah. He, he knew it all because he yeah. was yeah, watching yeah. all of it. Mm-hmm. You know, and if there was anything special, you know, he'd he'd he'd, he'd have like he'd have his his main number two borrow. I don't mm-hmm. know if you knew yeah. borrow. Yeah, borrow Primerac. Yeah, know. I know who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, I don't know him. And no, he, yeah. people never saw him. He was always in the stands. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Half time, he'd be in the dressing room and he'd be chatting to Arsene in his ear. You know, just saying little bit. The bits. bird's eye view. Yeah. Different looking. You know, so him borrow and then Pat. They would always talk talk to each other, mm-hmm. but it it was strange, you know. Like as good as he was, it's hard to say he was brilliant at that or he was yeah. brilliant yeah, at that. Yeah. He took every session, yeah, every training, unless unless he was in front of the FA. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he, he he was. It it was hard to say how good of a coach he was because mm. he weren't he weren't very good at man to man stuff. He oh, okay, used to, used to hate it. He used to hate, you know, like when they t- they they flipped the the chart over with the yeah. team written on it yeah <clears throat> like the lads that aren't in it they're like oh afterwards like, oh can i have a word they're like no i'll see you monday yeah. and then on monday you wouldn't see him oh wow well, just try to avoid the, the <laughs> yeah. confrontation like yeah. just yeah. oh exactly. wow yeah it's bad because i remember rightly saying that when when mr vega came in he changed the nutrition changed everything and it was it was a massive culture shock mm. for for him and a lot of the lads for yourself how did you find that from a goalkeeper perspective? What was the the pressure, the added pressures of playing with, with Arsenal as, yeah. as opposed to George? Uh, the the expectation rose, yeah, and but then the tempo in training rose massively. Yeah. You know, you had to be on it in training. Yeah, you know, you couldn't go in and like just like half do it and then. Was like, it more with George and more be ready for the game? As long yeah. as you delivered on the game, that that's yeah, all that matters. That would that'd be good for him. But with yeah. Arson, he, he would actually pick players from training. As oh, well. okay, yeah. You know, guys that had done like really well all week. Yeah, they'd be like there or thereabouts with the first team. Oh wow! But the the intensity of it was just massive. Yeah, you know, and he was always on everybody. Yeah, you know, and he knew everything. 
you know he would he would always like walk in the dressing room and, and at the training ground and like morning 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 oh, okay you know and like but would spot anything yeah so we used to get place. weighed every friday yeah and one day he came in and he and, and colo colo tour yeah. he got his top off and asked him like morning colo can i have you on the scales please oh wow spotted it like that just because he had his top off he, good because he'd, he'd put on a bit yeah 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 well, and then he had, then he had to do his, the yeah. old extra training and all that sort <laughs> of stuff. Have you ever heard the the Colo story mm. when he comes in and he's absolutely smashing everybody on trial? <laughs> oh, um, I thought that was Yaya when Yaya went there on trial. No, it's Colo. It's it? Colo. Yeah, it was, I'll let, it was Yaya. Yeah, I'll let you. I'll let <laughs> you explain. It was like honestly, you know, like when you you throw a ball into a school playground and yeah. the kids chase it everywhere. That was Colo yeah. at our training ground. We're like Colo, stay at right back or stay at centre half, and he'd be yeah. like, oh, "It's okay," and then whoosh, off he go. What what you know, was that though? Just enthusiasm. Yeah, 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 and 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 and, and a little lack of positional sense. Yeah, 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 you yeah. know, but you could see that he got yeah, what he lot. what he was yeah. going to need. He got that hardness about him, mm -hmm. you know. And like you say, he, he wanted he, he would kick anybody, mm -hmm. you know. Even in, like we'd have a little circle with two of them in the middle, and he'd be like going through players trying to get it. And <laughs> <laughs> I wanna I wanna ask this question. I was gonna save it to the end. You played with some unreal centre halves. So I'm going to pick four. And I just want you to pick the two you'd have in front of you. So you've got Tony Adams, yeah. Martin Keogh, yeah. Sol Campbell, or Cola. Who's the two you're picking to play in front of you? Oh, you've missed Steve Bold out as well. I mean, uh, yeah, oh, sorry, yeah. Steve. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Me and Steve had a little bit of an argument after when he was, uh, he was assistant. And uh, who got me sent off? Terrera got me sent off yeah, at Watford. Yeah. So me and Steve had a bit of an argument. <laughs> so still, you're not, so you still don't love like you, him. Steve, but I'm not mentioning you in this. <laughs> because <laughs> he's, he's top top man. Because by the way, he, Steve, he yeah. was part of like the back four. Yes, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that that was a really special back four. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it was all English, and it, yeah. it never played for England. Weirdly, but, yeah. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> it's bad when you say that. Yeah. It? I know. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. mental. Um, but Tony would definitely be in there. <sighs> We'd have Martin or Saul. Martin would go through a brick wall for you. Mm -hmm. Have you played against Martin? No, I haven't. No, no, no. I'm not that Lucky old. Sorry, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I do? I do like you know when you, when you're at your pub, you're like, oh, I think I could physically take on most people. Then I look back at some of the games and I think, oh, yeah, I don't no. the back of my head would have liked it. <laughs> You'd give a bit out, and yeah. yeah. Mine, because him and him and Mark Hughes used to have a right yeah. go. You know, like yeah, I'd be Sparky playing like top, bro, I think yeah. it was like Neville Southover's when they were playing for Everton, Hughesy yeah. and that, and never boot the ball up into this. And, and I wouldn't even look at the ball. I just watched Martin and Mark Hughes like absolutely He's smashing each, each other, other just to get to the ball that's amazing it was brilliant um i think i think i'd have to go for soul yeah do you yeah, think he gets so. the credit he deserves so you know because he went from spurs to I arsenal think that's, yeah he kind of never really mm. got that yeah that's i know same. what you mean but Martin, but it's like really colo's like he wasn't in that. He, he yeah. was only just like coming through when I left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, know, so, it wasn't the colo he ended up being. No. That, 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 yeah, that. you know. So mm -hmm. yeah, he's really close with Martin and Saul. Mm -hmm. Um, but as a as a battler or yeah. or one, that, if you want somebody to man mark you, yeah, Martin all day long. Oh yeah, yeah. But he's not giving Saul you was, Saul had got a little bit more, like with the ball and that. Mm -hmm. I've never known anybody have so many massages in my life. So I can't <laughs> he used to have his own table in the dressing room. Yeah. It was frightening. <laughs> How did you find the transition from going like, you know, you said the, the back four, the English back four, the stepping up, the offside, the one nil to Arsenal, mm. the George Graham era, like then going into Arsene Wenger where you're playing football and you're playing out from the back. And... Yeah, it, but it was done with that back four. Mm -hmm. That back four stayed. Arsenal, yeah. he left that alone. So yeah. like Dicko... Yeah. Baldy, Nigel, Tony, that was left alone, and because they, they knew what they were doing, mm -hmm. and then asking, and then he added, obviously Martin started coming in, then Salt, then Ashley, yeah, then Lauren went in at right back, yeah, you know, so it was, it it was a shock, you know, like I'm actually rolling it out to Tony Adams, yeah, yeah. and he's wanting to play football, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because it, it was, it was that. weird, you know, yeah. but but then we found out that, you know, or I found that they they can do it, yeah, you yeah. know, it was just a case of like letting him go. Yeah, and and they did, you know, and they they just, they adapted to it. So you just mentioned him, and we feel like he doesn't get enough credit. Ashley Cole, wow, just how good was he? What a left back, yeah. you know, like you you don't get any 
it doesn't get much better than that. Mm -hmm. You know, apart from like Roberto Carlos, who could like hit free kicks for fun. Yeah, yeah. but I, I think he, I said it at another podcast. I think he's better yeah. personally. If, yeah. I, as, if as I had a, to pick a, a, one or the other as left yeah. back, yeah, as an all round think, left back, yeah, I think I don't. I can't think of anyone that's better than Ashley yeah. Cole. Personally. And didn't get the praise that he should have done mm -hmm. because of the move. Do you because think? of the move, and yeah. it, and and if I'm honest, it was it was Arsenal's fault. That yeah, he, that he went. I have heard that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he he got, he was offered a deal, and they reneged on it, and then he got offered more by Chelsea, and yeah. that, that's how that's how quickly it changed. And he yeah. got he got accused of being like casually cold and that. It yeah, wasn't, it wasn't that. No, you, you know, and I've always got... stuck up for him. Yeah, whenever that's yeah. been mentioned, I'm like, no. Yeah. And as much as I love Arsenal, I'm like, no, this is the true this story. Is the truth of it. Yeah. yeah, I guess you kind of got that. That same instance with with Sol Campbell, the reason why he's not really looked the same with Ashley, mm -hmm. is, yeah. it, is it because they don't show well, we'll say Proceeds. don't show loyalty, but to the general fan, for, and from the, I suppose the club who employs the player, yeah. that that loyalty isn't there, so mm -hmm. it's kind of spread throughout that football world, and that's why they aren't liked. And the, mm -hmm. yeah, and the problem with especially with Sol as well is that you know as, as good as he was he left Tottenham on a free didn't he yeah yeah and he got nothing for nothing, him yeah you know so that I think that's like really hard for Spurs fans to take yeah. what what was that first game like because I remember watching that I was on Sky wasn't it when we went back Northland to and Derby. Northland Derby. I, Why, I was right, injured mate? oh you was injured <laughs> surprisingly oh. I was about to say. <laughs> good one to miss that <laughs> but I do rem but, I do remember oh. that being really no, like, the, the, it weren't so much the, the coach yeah as it went in yeah it got it got absolutely trashed oh, yeah. What 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 was? Can you give us a little, a little bit of insight? What was Sol like mentally? Was he good? Was he strong? He was really strong. Yeah. You know, he, he knows what he wants, Sol. Yeah. You know, and sometimes he 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 doesn't. I don't know. I was going to say put it, put it over in the right way, but yeah. he puts it over his way. You yeah, know, and yeah, he, yeah. And he knows. And he knows what he wants. Yeah. Um. You know, some people like it that way. Some people don't. Yeah. You know, and but he was he was brilliant. Yeah. He was like so strong. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, like and and just like so fit as well, but yeah, could play as well. Yeah, yeah, that that's you know, what, which is what was, we needed. Yeah, I think that was underrated as well, wasn't it? Yeah, just how good he could play, how good Tony Adams could play. You mentioned the name; it was a blast from the past for me because I don't think he ever gets enough credit. Nigel Winterburn, oh, what a player! Yeah. Yeah. I know. Do you know, like when you hear, <laughs> he certain didn't have names. many many appearances for England, did he? Nigel no, Winterburn. probably no. two or three. Boldy yeah. had one or two. So Dico had twenty about twenty two. Yeah. Mm. And he had quite a lot under Graham Taylor. Graham Taylor's like the the only, yeah, the only manager yeah. that was liked it, him. Uh, he's, he's my Stuart best Pierce. mate, so I better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Stuart Pierce that would have been in front of him was one? Uh, Nigel. Yeah. 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 Um, it's not a bad one, is it? Yeah, but he like. was <laughs> he was one of them players, like if you saw him in the street, yeah, he'd be like, He's a footballer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he, he, he didn't have like, yeah. you know, a good yeah. physique or anything like yeah. that, you know. But he had the engine he had was mm -hmm. was brilliant. Yeah, he was up and yeah. down, wasn't he? You, you spoke about how the the transition of that back four, that all English back four, into uh, more athletic, more football based uh, back four. Yeah, you do have to talk about how good that midfield was, though, because <sighs> between Petit and Vieira, yeah. oh. and then Gilberto Silva, and obviously so on and so on, but those two. I think yeah. transformed the way that football was played in England mm -hmm. personally from a midfield. And, and the foreign player as well. Yeah. yeah. They got yeah. Well, yes. Ar Arsene yeah, was, he was smart because like when he came, he brought like Petit, Vieira and Elka. And Elka. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. um, that that was, then, uh, see how moving yeah. forward. <laughs> and, then he moved, and then he brought in Grimondi and Remy Gard. Right? Yeah. So yeah. that was five French players and they all came in on this new nutrition stuff yeah, yeah they were already eating you know me were watching them eating these like mounds of food yeah like three hours before kickoff and we're thinking like they're never going to be able to carry on running with all that in their bellies and yeah. they never stopped yeah yeah, yeah. It, and that's why everybody was like oh we'll get on Let's that, that. I was yeah. say, right his pre-match meal it used to be like a fillet steak with a fried egg on top <laughs> i was like ham and cheese omelet with beans and that yeah, just went yeah. straight out the window but with Vieira and petit especially manu manu petit he could see, he could, he saw passes yeah. that we would say, how has he, he not, he's not even looked there before. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He yeah. just had this picture in his head where everybody would be and he he could find these passes and he was brilliant at it. Do you and think then, he got the, the, the credit he deserved in England because he was seen as more of a, a hard man, wasn't it? Him and Vieira mm -hmm. were seen as like yeah. enforcers, what would he yeah. called in the day. Yeah. But, but obviously then they go and win. He didn't, yeah, World he didn't Cup, get the whatever. credit for being as good a player as he was. Yeah. You know, because like they were both really physical. You know, yeah. Patrick's as tall as taller than me. Yeah. Manu's not far off. 
you know, so yeah. we had like a really tall physical team. Imagine like that yeah, intimidation solid, in, yeah. the, in yeah. the tunnel. Like me, yeah. Tony Adams, like Sol. Yeah. All six foot plus, Patrick. Like Dennis is quite tall as well. Mm -hmm. and, and Thierry. Probably and it, need that for going into wars with like but, United. But then you just said as well, you've got into this new physical realm now where you could, not only physically are you looking great, but you're running over teams yeah. as well yeah. with the quality that you had. That yeah. Was it, was it, interested to see that bubbling up because you're you you're a bit of an age as this is developing you'll go oh you're sensing it you're smelling it we're, we're, yeah. we're proper it, you do you, and and like what i said to you earlier about with arsenal mary it was all about us yeah because he knew what he got yes and, he, yeah. and that's why he concentrated on us just mm -hmm. just uh, hardly spoke about the opposition in team meetings and things like that how, how was because it? of that you know we had that self-belief yeah how was it to see so well like so I'm just thinking of the strikers so you would have had right Dennis and, and, and Righty, yeah. which are like, that's an unbelievable. Alan Smith before that as well. Alan Smith, yeah. 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 I always forget about Alan Smith. Yeah. Lo yeah. Lovely fella, by the way. One of the best yeah. voices on Sky <laughs> as well. Um, Is it that Brummie accent? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> then you go, then you go um, Nicholas and Alka. Yeah. Like that level of striker finisher, mm. What was the competition like? Because I know, and people that don't know football, <laughs> strikers and goalies, we hate each other. Oh, don't we? I know. Throughout the week. And we have proper competitions, <laughs> yeah. don't we? You know? And right, right, he always used to say, he, he said, I always used to like it when the goalie would try in training. Yes. <laughs> because, because like we, we do drills and like they're, they're biased towards the strikers. And yeah, they're like absolutely yeah, just, smashing it past yeah. us from six yards. And I used to like go, I used to get the right on. Sometimes I'll just walk Is that in. why they use like the third choice keeper most of the time? Yeah. Just to yeah. smash the ball out. Yeah, because... You know, kind of but I would do it. Well. Yeah. I would do it. You know, like for a little bit, yeah. and then it'd like, I'd like do it properly. I used yeah, to call yeah, it. Yeah, of course. You know, so I'd proper try. Yeah, it goes right. It'd be like, go at least try for some. Yeah, you know, because it just used, used to do me. And I'm like, yeah, but this is for you. Like you trying to yeah. knock me nose off and things. <laughs> and, um, but, but what were those? What were they those were shooting sessions like. They were good. I tell you, Nicholas and Elka, frightening. Yeah, frighteningly good when he first came as a 17 year old. Mm -hmm. Didn't speak much English, but I, I never forget. Tony and Baldy and Martin trying to kick him in training because he was embarrassing them yeah. and they still couldn't hit him. Could get close to him. He yeah. was so he was better than Thierry. Yeah, yeah. I was when, gonna I was gonna say this because there was again because he obviously went from yourselves to, to Real Madrid and I just don't think we appreciated just how good he's because there was a lot yeah. of off field noise and he was yeah. considered a bad egg. And he he was moving he ended up moving around quite a yeah. lot, didn't he? And he yeah. didn't stay at one club for a long time. But just the career yeah. that, that that man had no. and the ability that he had was underrated really his, as, his as speed and the power of his shots yeah there's a goal in, in the cup final against Newcastle he scores past I think it's Shea Given yes and, another one yep. and he and he and it's not like a pure strike mm -hmm. but the power that he gets on it as he hits it along the ground was just like Shea hardly moved do you yeah. notice the power in the strikes and as a keeper because I've always thought mm -hmm. like you, you see some people who you know you can hit the ball solid yeah. and then you got others like you just is it just how it is? Like, yeah. I, tell you, just... I tell you, who doesn't get the the credit for power? in shot Bex. Yes. yes. Yeah. He he when he when he used to like take some free kicks against me and that, I, I, and I, and I get my hands behind it like when he not hit a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get my hands behind it and I could feel the power of the ball like forcing my hands apart. Wow. You know, noticeably. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. It's just catch. Let's go. But I was yeah. like, whoa. You know, yeah. this has got extra on it. Yeah, then you've, I've got people like PSC and stuff you know, mm -hmm, yeah. that could really smack it. Just go straight through yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, but it's different now because like the balls have changed. The balls mm -hmm. are faster. Yeah, there's no doubt. You yeah. know, so it's it's a you know you but but players move with the times. No, mm -hmm. definitely. I was I was going to talk about Thierry because you said obviously Nicholas was obviously better naturally when he came yeah. in. How how was that seeing? Because I think Thierry changed. Bit more content. I think there's like four players that have changed. Every generation, you get a player that changed the way that mm. strikers are. Yeah. So originally, it would have been R9. Everyone wanted to have this striker that could take it from deep and run past the score. Then I think Thierry made all yeah. Mohamed Salah and Mane. Mm. They're all off Thierry's offspring, in my opinion. Yeah. Then you get Didier Drogba, mm -hmm. and everyone went from playing two up front to actually we could do it with one. Yeah. And I think now it's Haaland. Yeah. I and, think, and a little bit before that, Shearer. 
Yeah. You know, Shearer was like the old fashioned centre yeah. forward, weren't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like definitely. went from that and then like you said with Drogba and, yeah. and you got the big and little man combination yeah. as well yeah. that people went But through. I feel like everyone everyone changed like certain people changed the way they mm, I, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily put <clears> Shearer <throat> in it personally because I think like he's an all round goal just an all round really very very, very yeah. good player. <clears> but <throat> I feel yeah. like Thierry was a winger that everyone tried to get. I think Man you went and signed a French kid. Bellion, David Bellion. Yeah, David Bellion. Yeah. He was like Pony. Sorry, David. <laughs> he was Pony when he bought it. He was like, he's French, he's left footed. Yeah. He must be like Thierry Henry. And everyone was trying to yeah. recreate I that. I know what you mean. Didn't they get him from Sunderland or did he go for He to went Sunderland to Sunderland after, after, yeah. But I feel like um, the reason I say all that is how was it to see that development and that growth? Because he didn't hit the ground running, did he, Thierry? No, it took came him a while. Yeah. yeah. It took him a while to score. So how was it for, for you guys to nurture that and, and go, like come on and then once he came and turned into who he yeah. did how was that well you, you do you know what it's like because you get judged in training of course you do yeah. you know whenever you go to a club yeah mm -hmm. you, you're getting judged in training straight away the first two days sussing you out yep you know and we knew that he was good yeah but it was it wasn't transferring into games yeah you know and it was a it, it was like a confidence thing because he was still young yeah you know so it, if he made a mistake or he didn't score it would affect him yeah you know so we were like trying to like no just keep playing keep mm -hmm. like he's gonna come he's mm -hmm. gonna come and then when it did you know you, you just saw this player that i always ask arsenal players you've got one choice dennis burkamp or thierry henry Oof. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah. That's what a, would you choose I'd go with Thierry, yeah. right? And the reasons are that Thierry could get the ball off me yeah. outside the box and he could go the whole length mm. yeah. and score. Whereas Dennis was more around the opposition box. Yeah, yeah De Dennis you know, was like a totally di but yeah. Totally different players, but two you know, They're proper Arsenal legends. Both of them are yeah. a joke, aren't they? Yeah. 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 And, it, together. and Dennis could look after himself as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, as, yeah. as nice as he looked and as calm as he looked, <laughs> he could be proper nasty. Yeah. Just, just as we're on the subject of him, how awkward is it with him not travelling? You know when you're going into Europe mm -hmm. and you didn't want to fly? How, yeah, it was. Do you, as, as a teammate, are you like, come on, Dennis, we fucking, we need you? Like, no, you, he, he, we knew because he would get happening. like proper ill. Yeah. Oh wow. Even even if he was to be even if he knew he was going to the doctors to talk about or you know about yeah. his phobia. Yeah. He would get ill with that. I oh, didn't realize mad. it was a phobia. I just thought he just didn't like it. No, he was just know, I think he, got, he had a he... scare or something and then yeah. that was yeah. it like not you know. And like some of the the Champions League games they would drive him to get a driver to take him like 2 days before. Yeah, so he could get so the driver. He out. gets there. Yeah. And then when when we arrive on the plane and we train like the night before, yeah. he's ready for that. Mm. That's that's mental. When you think about it like that, that is absolutely crazy. Yeah. You just brought a moment back into my mind that this wasn't actually even in my research. It's just childhood memories coming up. So apologies. When you started playing Champions League games at Wembley, for yeah, that, that small time period, I remember. I would say Fiorentina, Batistuta. Yeah. Just how good was he? Because that is like my childhood it's Italian football. Yeah, but because that. he he was he was like. More like an English striker, but yes. like Italian looking, like yeah, good looking. Yeah. You know, like he had like yeah. he had the long hair and every, he had the lot, didn't he? <laughs> you know, and, and he was decent player. Yeah, he and all. Bad, he? <laughs> and, uh, you know, but he was he was hard to play against. Yeah, you know, because he 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 could get he could get the ball anywhere, mm -hmm. take someone on and, and finish it. But Has yeah, it, it was that was weird that tr playing our, our Champions League games at Wembley because it it I felt that it all it lifted the away team more. The yeah. way he does, because like, they're playing at Wembley, playing at National Stadium. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, plus we, plus we had to travel from Canary, not Canary Wharf, at um, oh, what's it called? You just stayed at Grove? Conrad. At, no, oh, um, oh, um, oh um, Harbour, something Harbour. I know the one you're on about. It's, it's yeah, gone. yeah, near Chelsea's gone. ground. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we would travel from that. We would stay there. Yeah. And then we'd travel from there to Wembley. And you know what time yeah, we normally yeah. set off? About yeah. four or five o'clock to get take, there. Yeah, take it out at least. To take us yeah. forever to get there. Yeah, yeah. When, when you Chelsea look, Conrad, that's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. When you used to, um, when you when you look, when you look back at those times, I think we we touched on a lo loads of little things. So I apologise because this never goes the way it's supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> but you, we're in the, in the presence of a legend, so we have to just keep <laughs> yeah. keep going with keep it. Going. When you when you look at uh, at ninety six, uh, and the teams on from there. Is there a regret that you guys, or with hindsight, do you think you guys should have done better? You should have won something. Definitely. And what 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 was missing? 
What was the uh, missy? Was uh, it managed by scoring a pen? That's what I missed. Yeah, that, <laughs> that the '96 team was a really good team. Yeah, um, and you know, like you said, you you were only really young then. Yeah, but I I felt even, and I never forget this when I was on the pitch after we, I think Muller scored the winning mm -hmm. penalty for Germany, and I was all like, I was on, I was like on the pitch, and I was like, oh shit, we're out. Mm -hmm. And then I then I just got this feeling of, oh, but we've done really well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and now. The country are now starting to love the England team again. Yes, yeah, yeah, there, yeah. Was a, there was a little yeah, bit of yeah. you know, like we didn't qualify for America in mm -hmm. ninety four. Yeah, mm. you know, so we had a bad Europeans in ninety two. Um, but yeah, I just felt that that started bringing yeah, big, yeah, the belief England back. fans back yeah. and the belief back, and then. I think I don't know whether I don't know where I'd go with the ninety eight team or the two thousand and two team as being Oof. the better. Yeah. So the ninety eight team we went out to Argentina on penalties. That yeah. was that was that was when Beckham got sent off. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they, that was a good team that. Simeone. But then the the O two team was really good apart from the goalie letting a long range shot in. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, but it was different team, and it, and it's hard to you just sometimes you just need a little bit of luck. Mm -hmm. Do you know, you know like the, 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 the for ninety six for instance, like guys are like being that far off. He, yes. thought, he thought the the German goalie was going to get a touch on it yeah. Yeah, as yeah. a cross shot came in. That's mm -hmm. why he hesitated. Yeah, but you know when you look when I look back because I think a lot of the especially when you look at the. Um, ninety eight, two thousand two. A lot of that was considered um, the golden generation, and yeah. trying to get that midfield to work. in In hindsight, now we'd be like, "Well, why didn't we just play a four three three? Uh -huh. But that was never, no, it was never even thought of. Mm. No, and, and, it, types. and it was, it was weird because really, it was always like Lampard and Gerrard, yeah, and, and then whenever they played together, they weren't very good, you know. Yeah. So, and, and that just like stuck for some reason, you know. Mm -hmm. So then that always alternated. Could you sense that in the camp as well that there wasn't really enough room for the two of them to play? We had Skulls in there as well. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Oh, like yeah. Skulls used to play at the left, didn't they? Yeah. And was, yeah. was it David Batty as well? David Batty, Nicky Butt was there yeah. as well. You know, so there was there was good choice. Good, yeah, good for you. Yeah, but yeah, the, that you know, like that divide that Rio talks about yeah. quite a bit of that was just coming in a little bit, but. I would all, like almost go out of my way to make sure it did because the, there was like the Man United table, the Arsenal table, and then the others. Yeah, yeah. You know, and because there was a lot of of, of us at Arsenal, a lot of Man United. You, know, you, you used to sit with your friends, but then I'd be yeah. like, uh, you know, I could see it, and I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to sit over there. Must be intimidated to come into that. Yeah. If you are a non mm -hmm. non big team, you, know, you get. Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Somebody, even someone as established like Nicky Barnby, for example. Yeah, where does he sit? Yeah, where, I know. That's a yeah, you know, unbelievable it, it, player. It was noticeable and it's a good yeah. name from you, that is. But yeah. I was one of them people that always, because oh, I've been around it for so long. Yeah, I would always like go and say hello to like you know, because yeah. Bex always to talks to me and tells me about you know how he never forgot that I came over to him and said oh you know that's welcome and yeah you know yeah. and, I, and but I just did it. It wasn't just Bex. I did it to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's know, just, but he just remembers it and it's mm -hmm. something that you never forgot. He says. So how did you become? How did the ponytail come about? <laughs> we can't, we can't have David Seymour here and not talk about I know. that. I'm, that I'm just sitting ponytail. here looking at you, and I can picture you in your headband. And <laughs> yeah. I'm just sitting here looking, thinking you've got a headband on. <laughs> where did, uh, where did that start? Was it just so it started. It was weird because I, I didn't have it. So Euro 2000, mm -hmm. I didn't have it. But if you see the pictures from that era, I got long hair. Yeah. Mm. Right, <laughs> and it was like it was well on the way. Um, but that was like, and I just used like pretty much like I've got now, just like to wipe the gel in it and yeah. push it back. And um, and then I thought, oh, I'll, I'm going to go for a ponytail because yeah. my dad always had long hair. He had a, he had a beard and a tash and a long a long hair. And he like he looked like a proper rocker. <laughs> and um, so that I think that's my where it came from. And then yeah, after the Euros, so the next season, I, I turn up at the training ground and I've got my hair in the little ponytail thing. The lads are like. Whoa! Look at him, <laughs> right? So then, the, us goalies, we we go out like half an hour before yeah, we do yeah. our training with, with Bob and that. And then next thing, I looked, and all, all the lads are like, they're all coming around doing their warm up, and they they, they run past us, and they've all got like headbands on, oh, little yeah. <laughs> makeshift ponytails and everything. They were doing all right, day. <laughs> <Like, laughs> <laughs> How long did the banter last for with that? Um, 
a little bit. But... Six years. Has <laughs> <laughs> it ever stopped? I've six foot four. And then, you know. <laughs> then you can look after yourself. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I see yeah, a rumour then... that you've still got it in your bedroom drawer or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I've got it at home. You've yeah. still got the ponytail yeah. now? And it's in a pack. It's, it's somewhere in the house. I don't know. Actually, I don't know where, but I know I've got it. That's yeah. going to fetch you a few quid on eBay. One no, day. You know, no, because like that's what because I had it chopped off for charity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the Bobby Moore Fund. Yeah. Um, on live on TV, and then just like pew, pew, off, and then they were like, "Oh yeah, auction your pony." And then they were like, "No, but don't forget, it's got your DNA in it." I was like, "I'm yeah. having that." Yeah, yeah, yeah just in All case. The, you know, you yeah, just you never know, know, do you? It's like it's not worth. Yeah. So just want to feel conscious of time, but just want to go like, you you leave Arsenal. You go to Man City. Yeah. And there was a great story that you told me the other day that I think was, was when you stood in the tunnel. You get oh, Arsenal. Yeah. Get Ar <laughs> plays Arsenal. Could you, could you share us oh, that no. story? So, yeah. And, and so, like, Kevin Keegan made me captain for the day. Yeah. And um, and I'm in the tunnel and I'm going out and, and I've got my Man City kit on and, like, Arsenal are there in their yellow kit. And all I'm thinking about is, as I'm going out, he's like, don't throw it to an Arsenal player. Don't throw it to an <laughs> Arsenal player. Because <laughs> that's what I could, you, you know, I was thinking to... like just natural Abbey, like, there you go. Yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah, it was it was weird. Um, it was great as well, but mm. playing against my old club mm. after what Arsenal had told me, yes. you know, like number yeah, three. Yeah. So then that, you know, what I said about proving people wrong. Yeah, yeah no. It's I wanted to still prove him wrong. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, because I didn't really want to leave. Yeah. But, you know, I wanted to stay at Arsenal. Um, and and I remember, like, Arsenal scored first and then City equalised. And when we realised that, I'm like, going, I'm running around the box giving it loads like that. <laughs> Thierry, like, looked at me and went, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> Did you feel weird celebrating against them then? Or was it just no, natural I because just you wanted it. to win? I just, exactly. Yeah. Like that against, and like what I said yeah. about proving people yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah. You know, and then that's why I never give strikers or players stick yeah. that don't celebrate. You know, yeah, I know yeah. what they're feeling, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's weird. Do you, do you celebrate against your old clubs? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> it's my know. job. Yeah, it's yeah. my job. I, exactly. I think I think as well at the same time, I found, found probably what I said, but you definitely will. It's you got rid of me. I didn't choose yeah, to leave. Exactly. You know, so mm. you similar mm. to you. You said I wasn't good enough for whatever reason, yeah. or the money was right, whatever it might be. Well then, sod you. If yeah. I score, haha. Do you remember me? <laughs> That's kind yeah. of what I want. The fans give it your loads, of course, don't they? Yeah. And if, if to be I... fair, the Arsenal fans didn't give me much stick. They no, were, they, they were not. Well, you are a bit of a legend. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm known as a bit of an arsehole. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully I've got a bit of credit. There. That's number one. Yeah. <laughs> but I was just going to ask you, you know, when you left Arsenal, and it because it, you left the season there was about to be the Invincibles, yeah. right? It was that season, but you was at a very high level. Everyone was mm. at that. City wasn't the city that we know now. No. It was it was developing into yeah. Well, like the, the, my first season at City was the first season in the the ground that they're in. Yes, now. yeah. Um, Commonwealth game. Yeah, wasn't it? and uh, it was uh, Kevin Keegan was manager. Mm. You know, you got Derek Fazatli, Arthur Cox. Yeah, Piercy was what on the coaching staff. Peter yeah. Nettie was the goalkeeping coach. You know, so it was like old school. Yeah. So like going from Arsenal, that was you know even to the point where mm. when we first went and like the first home game, three o'clock kickoff. What time are we meeting, boss? Uh, 1.30. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thirty. You, yeah. you know, I'm used to like it being in a hotel in the, the night before. Yeah. Or meeting like first thing in the morning, going to a hotel, doing stretching routines, eating this yeah, big yeah. load of food and everything. And it was like, what? I was like, how, how do you know what they're eating? Yeah. So yeah, they're all right. They'll look after themselves. I'm like, they're footballers. Yeah, it <laughs> so doesn't they'll work eat anything. Way. Yeah. You know, and probably nothing that's good for them. Yeah. yeah. And, you that know, and, how was that for you though to 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 mentally get around that? And the reason I ask that is because we have this discussion all the time. Because I've, when I've gone from Watford Premier League to Birmingham, it's, yeah, it's similar things that you're talking about. Mm. I'm used to being in the hotel the night before. Yeah, we meet at ground uh, home games for one o'clock, for three o'clock kickoff. Is it, is it, oh, and you're wow, like, oh yeah, oh that's a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> and, and while it's nice. Yeah, it's still a bit like. But you don't it feel it's feel, the, you don't feel it's right, do you? Exactly, yeah. yeah. You know, because you've done it where it's been successful before. Yeah. And it's made you successful. Yeah. yeah. And so then you end up like just doing it yourself. Yeah. You I'll know, and it, start I questioning yourself it. a little bit, don't you? Yeah. Like, and then sometimes it puts you out your rhythm as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, like it puts you out your pattern for match day. Yeah, yeah. You know, everything you used to do in order and yeah, make sure no. that in here that make sure that everything's <laughs> right. You know, no yeah. matter what it is. 
you know, even like with my gloves, if I've got a scuff on my gloves, I yeah. wouldn't wear them. I'd take them off. Yeah. Because if I'm at full stretch and that scuff bit is the only bit that's going to touch the ball and it goes in, yeah. why did I change my glove? You know, so it's all them yeah, little everything. things yeah. that keep know, this exactly, yeah. that keep this happy. No, definitely. And, that, and that's, sorry, go on, you go. Yeah, go on. There's one more question I wanted to ask you. You know when you played the Sheffield United game and Overmars scored from uh, Carnu? You know the... Oh yeah, the, yeah, the one at Highbury. Yeah, yeah. What was I heard that you was one of the main um, instigators. Instigators that yeah. made the game get replayed. What was what was the old thing with that? Why did you? What was you so? Well, because I'd got replayed? like thousands of Sheffield United fans behind me, <laughs> seeing, seeing, you know, shouting at me, seeing me yeah. chuck, chuck the ball in the goal, you know, like yeah. throw it in the net because yeah, yeah. it's, it's, you know, the integrity of the game. I got like. Yeah, and I was so I was getting all that, and then it, and it just didn't feel right. Mm. Yeah, it didn't at all, you know. And I remember going in and saying, "You've, you've got to replay it. You yeah. can't, you can't go through on that. You'll never yeah. hear the end of it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that was along with a lot of other discussions as well. Yeah, um, you know, and I think that's why they um, they replayed it, you know. And, but when 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 they done it, I, I was like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. You know, like you don't do that. Yeah. You know, like I think it was Carnu, wasn't it? Carnu, yeah. He went first. He mm. went for the throw. Yeah. Was it because he was new to England and he didn't really? There's other words for it. <laughs> <laughs> child friendly podcast. Yeah, it's a child. Yeah, it's a PC podcast. <laughs> so I don't you... know why he done it. Yeah. Because it was just. You... Yeah, you don't do it. Just it's like a moment of madness, well, yeah. really. You know, just... like as we talked about goalkeeper, Carnu was different yeah. as well. Yeah, I, <laughs> I remember playing against him, and he must have been forty at the time. He was at Portsmouth <laughs> in the Championship. Yeah, I, I, I don't even want to be disrespectful. He must have been like thirty-eight, and I'll never forget it. It was my first season at Watford, so it was two thousand and ten. Yeah, two thousand and ten. Friday night game on Sky, and I watched him because this is this is Carnu. Yeah, like, wow, just come from Warsaw. Yeah. I played against Cardo and he just walked around the edge and then he started doing some keep ups. Then he started jogging and that's all he did. You know, everyone else uh, is yeah. warming up for about yeah. 25, 30 minutes. He <laughs> just ran around the edge and I was thinking, is he going to do, he's going to do sprints? Is he going to do? Uh, yeah. And he just walked in, put his kit on, come out and played. And I was like, oh, I, you know, when you got asked that question stuff, I've done everything wrong my whole life. Because this <laughs> Visually, guy, he's not the most athletic. Though. No, he wasn't, he like wasn't athletic, but, but he just relied was, on his touch. Yeah. Yeah. His touch was uh, and his strength yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's very thin as well, but yeah. he was slight. Mm -hmm. But yeah. he could hold people off and that, and, yeah. and his drag bite was... He, he would he would still get me now even though I knew he was going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I do want I do want to ask you about your podcast because you mentioned it and obviously yeah. doing, us, doing us a favour by being on here. I'm what what's, it. <laughs> what has uh, this one? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what has made you what has made you dive into the podcasting world? So it it was weird because it started with the Euros, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I got approached um, by the lads and they said, "Oh, do you, do you fancy doing a podcast for the game for the England games?" And I was like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I, fa I found it, re when I retired, I, fa I found it hard when I was playing, watching football. Yeah. You know, like looking back at games and, you know, yeah, yeah, even when I was it. watching stuff like Arsenal games, I would fast forward it to when the ball went near me. Oh, okay. And then yeah, press yeah, play. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I always found it hard to watch football and I'd never like, that's why I never went into the TV stuff yeah, because I did it a little bit, but then I found out I, I knew I wasn't up to speed. Yeah. And I found it hard, you know, yeah. and I ended up like blagging it a bit and, and I just didn't feel right. So then they approached me to do this, and I thought, oh, yeah, just the England games. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And then they asked me to do, like, last season, start of last season. I was like, ooh, yeah. that's like means I'm going to have to start watching football again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so then, and, and, I, and I started doing it, and then I started, get, like, getting into a pattern where I'm, like, watching Match of the Day more rather than yeah, watching. Because yeah. if you end up watching all the games, it's like, it's a full -time how boring job. do you get? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're watching football yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, you know, because I've got all this stuff I like doing. I love my fishing and golfing yeah. with my, me and my wife skate still and yeah. all that. You know, there's lots of other stuff to do. Yeah. Um, But now I'm, like, into the second season and, uh, uh, yeah, and, and I enjoy it. You know, yeah. I enjoy interviewing people as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had, like, Robbie Williams on. We've had yeah. Russell Brand, Matt Lucas, Piers Morgan. You know, like, lots of, like, Big hitters, big hitters Probably, that yeah. are like yeah. that are so passionate about their football and different 
conversations because they're in different sports, different mm, yeah. uh, areas of the world. Yeah, but, they, yeah. but their passion for football is massive. Mm. You know, you know what Piers is like. Oh yeah, yeah. you know, and especially with Arsenal, and he, he don't mind saying it as it you is. Just you just wind know? him up and then let him go. I know, yeah, yeah. but it, it was good because it, because like it was it was my podcast. Seaman says, and I'm like Piers, I'm asking the questions. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> my turn. <laughs> so on, on the podcast, just to end, we have we have five questions. And this is the part of the show where you, you get to find out mm-hmm. how many people are like you, like you really. Yeah. So I'll let you lead with the first one. What's the biggest thing that annoys you the most? In, in life. Just in life. In, yeah, life. in life, general. Whoa. I'd say people being late. Yeah. Yeah. Start, few, start to get a trend of that with, yeah. with uh, high performing uh, athletes. That's, yeah. a, that's a bugbear. Yeah, we spoke about it earlier. You yeah. Yeah. About, you know, with. Um, Abamyang, yeah, you know, we we used to like to be a couple of lads that would be yeah. serial late, late as we called them. They used to get told, but can I just elaborate on that? It's not like 10 15 minutes late, it's like one minute late. late. It's, yeah. so, oh, but yeah. it's so annoying, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's, it's like, the worst. Yeah, and it's, they still they do it at Arsenal now, you know, when with the under 21s and under 18s on that side. You know, I don't know yeah. so much with the first team, but with the under 21s and that, they have a meeting. Like almost like they probably have one every day, yeah. but they're in like a, a room, like yeah. a cinema room type thing. And they, if it's at ten o'clock, that door gets locked, locked at yeah. ten o'clock. And you're outside and, and you're out. Yeah. yeah, that's how it should be. But yeah. ten at ten o one, yeah, is, you're done. Yeah, you're done. And yeah. now you've got to sit there and be embarrassed when everyone walks out, <laughs> and hopefully yeah. everyone gives you some, you know what? Yeah. Um, if you had to pick a five aside team oh. of, of your greatest players you've played with. <laughs> I've got. You've got a lot of unbelievable players that are going to get left out. Yeah. Oh. But it's a five a side team. So we'll go. One so, my, my... so I, can I be in goal? Of course you can. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it's an Arsenal support. five a side team, if I'm honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, None of the England boys get in. Oh, yeah. That's different, though. <laughs> so, anyway, so my, my Arsenal five a side team would be me, Tony Adams, yeah. Henri Burkamp Wright. Oh wow! <laughs> oh well, just go, no, no, yeah, back to front. Just, go for or, it. just back to front. Or if if I'm sensible about it, but it would mean leaving righty out, and I would never hear the end of it. <laughs> you phone number you in like, a few hours. I'll be honest though, <laughs> and I that, put Patrick that, Vieira in midfield. Yeah, <laughs> that front three is, is getting you goals, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be twenty-seven, twenty-six. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's I would like twenty-six in. <laughs> I just see a matter that they wouldn't trap back a bit. <laughs> just, I'm just thinking about that five-side team. It's yeah. right, isn't it? Armory, Bergkamp. And hey, right go on, that, yeah. we'll do it twice. What about an England, England one? An England one. So, yourself in goal. Okay. Cause, cause I don't think you're going to pick David then, James. I love you, J-Mo, but we're not picking you. <laughs> <laughs> or Nigel Martin. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't think I've done this before. So, I, I would go me, I'd go Tony again. Oh, but... Yeah. Of all the centre-halves you played, Tony's still yeah. the, the oh, governor. Yeah. Yeah. How good was Tony? He was like, in front of you. He was good. He was underrated. Yeah. He got a lot of stick being called a certain... Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, but what he, you know, what he went through... Yes. Yeah. And then he came out the other end and yeah. he was still as good a player. At the level. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad, you know, like with Strictly, he's managed to... Reinvent himself, yeah, and show that side, show of his side, yeah, yeah you know, the Tony you, Adams side. Everybody knows the Tony Adams that that was like the football player, yeah, and then with his alcoholism, yeah, and, the dark, you know, the and then getting side out of it, the yeah. other side, they all yeah. know that, but they didn't know really know Tony Adams, yes, and you yeah. saw a lot of that in there, yeah, yeah, you're know, like being so nervous on the first one, yeah, you know, like I, I texted him straight after the first show, yeah, and I went, That's the worst you've ever felt for nerves in it, and he went. Definitely. I said yeah. I was exactly the same when I did Dancing on Ice. The most yeah. nervous I have ever felt in my life. Just completely out of your comfort zone. Yeah. 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 But that so that was you know, that's that, it was re- I felt it was really good for Tony because yeah. he went on and on but just showed but stayed the real Tony Adams that I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's brilliant. And um so Tony, then I would have Gaza. Jazz is a mega player, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> There's another guy yeah, that gets reckoned. Re- I feel like our generation missed out on him. Yeah. Yeah, I do also extent, feel like, like you, you could have five more podcasts on him. Like, because oh. I feel like he's five different personalities, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. mean that disrespectfully. No, I, totally. You could be a footballer, person, 
the the things he's been through, the yeah. injuries, the like, people he's like played the with. Show business. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. 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 Um, so that would be midfield and then two strikers. I'd have to go Shearer. Mm -hmm. Probably Teddy. Because Michael was just... I was going to say, did you play... He was 18 in 98, him? weren't he? So yeah. I didn't have him for that long. Yeah. Then he was injured for the rest anyway, wasn't he? So. <laughs> 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 Love you, Mike. Yeah. He got a Ballon d'Or as well. Like, he did... But Michael was no, very, very like yeah. frighteningly good, but mm -hmm. unfortunately injuries. Yeah, he's kind of. He, I don't think he does. The, he gets remembered for that. A he lot doesn't have the that, longevity. He yeah. does. He has no. an unbelievable career at clubs yeah. he's played yeah. for, but the, the longevity doesn't really help yeah. him. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so been me, me, Tony, Gaza. I know Insy will be on the phone, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. unlucky. Um, and then Shearer and Sheringham. Sheringham. Yeah. What three things would you take with you to a desert island oh. if you're stranded? Just for clarity, because we have had this question asked, the world is still going on yeah. outside. You just you're just trapped on this island. And nothing, I definitely nothing take my fishing rod. Yeah, that, <laughs> yes, my food. Yeah, I would take fire because yeah. <laughs> then I'd be able to cook yeah. it. And then so I've got to say my wife. Ah, oh, that's good. <laughs> that, you're that's a great time. One. Yeah, you're the that's second a, second person gone. to say. Yeah. But yeah. That's a free free holiday. That is. <laughs> <laughs> Fishing rod, that's not a bad fish, Not many. The one we had, which Anthony's already out, isn't he? Yeah, it's a, We had a it's... box at the yard. The first thing he said was vagina. Literally like Does that. It? No Does way. it not like... <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if it was a real one, a, a cup, I don't know. But he basically, that was it. He had to go. So yeah. that was showed where we are. Nothing was off the cards. No. So we wanted to say, mate, thank you very much for that. It's been a Pleasure. wonderful yeah. hour. We Love really it. appreciate it. Everybody, <laughs> this is Mr. David Seaman. <laughs>